Hi everybody, in today's video I'm going to be making a miniature piece of artwork for the wall of my doll's house. Now I want to say hello to all of my doll's house community who tune in every week and to anyone new but also to anyone who has tuned in to watch the review of my camera because this has a little bit of a different spin on it today so I'm used to making doll's house videos every week but actually when my YouTube channel started I did some unboxing of a printer for fine art printing and I also did some sample photos using my my camera so I'll be making a picture to go on my doll's house wall just here today but in the video at the same time I'm going to be talking you through my camera so that I can give a little bit of a review because I'm aware that some of my subscribers actually subscribed in the first place because of my photography so I am NOT an expert in photography at all but I do own this Sony A7 III. I've done some wedding photography for my friends and also for my brother, which is why I've got this camera. Um, but as I say, I'm not an expert. It is just a hobby. So anything I say today is not uh, built on expertise. It's just built on my experience. So I bought this camera as an upgrade from a Sony A650, I think it was, and I still have that camera and I still use it, I love it. Um, this camera, when I bought it, I actually found to be really difficult to use because it almost has too many settings, too many fancy features. Many years ago when I learnt the basics of photography, I learnt on an analogue camera, so I do have a basic knowledge about shutter speeds, apertures and that kind of thing, um, but I find that this camera has too many features beyond that and also just changing the aperture and the shutter speed is quite difficult because there's so many dials so it took me a long time to work out how to do that once I've grasped that I'm starting to get on a little bit better with the camera but at first it was a real problem it was a real challenge uh, so that's the first part of my review really so I'm glad I didn't get rid of my Sony a 650 because actually it still takes really nice photos and it's a lot easier to use um, I also only have one lens so far for this camera because they are so expensive and I didn't want to replace the lenses that I had for my a 650 seeing as I still use that camera. The lenses aren't interchangeable, although apparently you can get an adapter that I've not tried yet. So the lens that I'm using here is a 90mm macro lens um, f2.8. So the f2.8 bit refers to the aperture. So an f2.8 aperture can create a really lovely close-up image where part is in focus but the rest is out of focus. So the out of focus bit we call the burka. Um, the 90mm bit refers to sort of the distance away from the object so this isn't a zoom lens so I do need to move closer to my object or further away um, physically with the camera rather than zooming in or out. So for anyone who's interested in doll's house making, doll's house miniatures, I'm going to be taking a picture of Spooky the Ghost from my doll's house today to make a miniature piece of artwork to go onto the wall. And here's some pictures taken using this camera and lens of some of my previous miniatures. So this camera and this lens combined are really good for photographing doll's house miniatures because as you can see here, the macro lens means that you can photograph things really close up and in detail and also the f2.8 8 aperture means that you can get that really nice blurred out background to that burka. If I change my aperture to make it something like f22 then you get more of the image in focus where things in the foreground and the background are more in focus. As an example this picture here is at f14 which is quite far away from f2.8 and more of the background is in focus than some of the other pictures that I've shown so far. So the background's not 100% in focus but you can see more detail rather than it just being like this one where the background is just completely blurred out and is just light and shapes. Unfortunately a downside of having such a good macro lens is that it picks up all of the dust and the fluff so there's a bit of glue here on this chimney pot that's trailing and it's in such crisp detail because it's such a good macro lens um, so it's one downside but you want your pictures to be crisp and in detail so it's a good downside if there is such a thing. 
One thing that I will say about using this setup of the Cerny A7 III and the, um, the Cerny macro lens is that the macro lens is very big and very heavy and it is absolutely imperative that you use a tripod to keep the camera nice and still whilst you take the photograph. Without the tripod, every single photo that I have taken, it doesn't matter what settings I've used, it has been completely out of focus. In fact, when I first got this camera, it took me a good month or so to start actually enjoying using it because when I first got it, I just was devastated. I thought that I'd wasted all my money because every single photo was out of focus. But a tripod and the correct settings together and you can get really lovely crisp photos. In terms of using the camera for recording video footage, I'm going to show you a clip now of a video that I've got upcoming and this is sort of like an outtake that I've not used in the video. So the camera for filming with this lens is good for getting lovely cinematic shots where you want some of the areas out of focus but as soon as you start moving it struggles to search for focus so you can see here the camera's kind of going in and out looking for where my hand has gone you can help the camera by pressing on the screen to tap where you want the focus to be but if you're filming yourself that's very difficult to do because you've got a miniature in one hand you're in front of the camera and you also need to be behind it telling it where to focus so now I'm behind the camera here and everything is still in front of the camera, I can select my focus. So here it's focusing on the mince pies. And then if I press the carrots on the screen of the camera, you can see they went into focus and then the little rose pheasant at the background and I can move the focus as I want it. When it's not having to search too much, it's all right. It moves quite slowly, but if it's struggling to find focus, it's not so good. This little dial here, I set to A, which is aperture priority. That means that I can then use one of the dials at the front to move it to choose a different aperture. So to choose whether I want to have f2.8 or move all the way to f22. It then auto selects the shutter speed for me. So there are lots of different settings, but this is the one that I've settled on. It's the one that I think works the best. I've also changed some settings inside my camera so that I can change the exposure here. So you can see on the screen the sort of zebra stripes, they indicate that there's too much exposure on that section of the picture and so by turning the knob on the right here I can alter that. So I've spoken quite a bit here about technical camera stuff and photographers are probably watching it thinking, yep, that's all obvious, that's all self-explanatory. Um, but people that are at my level of skill with a uh, digital camera hopefully will find this useful because I would have quite liked a video like this to explain it to me before buying my camera to help me make that judgment on whether actually it was worth buying the camera or not. So I would say it's a really expensive camera and if you're just buying it to photograph miniatures, it's probably not worth it because it costs so much money. Um, I am at that stage now where I feel like I need to buy more lenses for it so that I get more use out of my camera for different things like landscape photography um, and portrait photography but the lenses are so expensive that I now feel a little bit stuck. You can buy cheaper lenses, so cheaper makes um, and also sort of cheaper Sony lenses that don't do quite as much but because I have my Sony a 650 and I'm still happy with it, I'm reluctant to buy those lenses because I've already got them for that camera. There's something else that I've not mentioned yet about this camera that has taken me a long time to get used to. So when I take photographs, I like to look through the viewfinder. Um, I don't like to look at the screen. And that is because I have learned how to use a camera using an analogue camera. And when you look through this viewfinder, it's not like any other camera that I've had before. I think it's because it's a mirrorless camera. And this is one of the things that I mean when I say that it's got too many fancy features. So when you look through the viewfinder, what you actually see is a mini digital screen. And if you try and focus in on an object, it actually zooms in on it. So you're not seeing what your full composition will look like. And I think that you can change the settings on your camera to alter this perhaps, but I've not found how to do that yet. And so I just don't like the fact that when you look through the viewfinder, you can't actually see the full composition of the photo. I am now getting used to looking at the screen instead of through the viewfinder and also makes it easier for focusing because you can just touch the screen to focus. Um, but when you're moving from photography where you've used your lens to focus, um, it, it feels a little bit strange. 
Uh, so it's taking some getting used to. So I'm still undecided on what I think of that feature, really. On the lens as well, you have to adjust whether you are using the automatic function on the camera or whether you are using that lens to focus. Um, and you'll find that as you're doing this, so I needed to come back here to change the shutter speed because this was overexposed. So I then had to step away and it jumped back to the full screen view. Um, so it jumps from being zoomed in to then being the full composition. Um, and I just think that as you're getting used to it being zoomed in, you're then back to the full composition and then you're used to it being the full composition and then it zooms in again. Um, so I, yeah, I just find it a really difficult feature. Pressing the screen to focus does work well, as shown here, so the focus is on the ghost's face. But I just feel like it takes away an element of the skill of photography. Um, so yeah, I'm just zooming in here on the pumpkin, so just by clicking it and then half pressing down the button and then pressing the button fully when I'm happy with the focus to show you how that focus changes. So here the ghost is out of focus in the background because I've focused in on the pumpkin. So today I am making a little picture to go on the wall of the bedroom of my Tudor doll's house. So I'm doing this by photographing my little ghost that I'd made in a previous video and I'm going to do it as a portrait. So I'm just taking some photos here, I'm taking a selection and then I'm going to pick the one that I like the most. And then I'm going to try and print it onto some canvas paper that I've bought. I've never used this canvas paper before, nor have I tried anything different than a sort of photographic fine art paper for my printer. So we'll see how that goes. The piece of canvas paper that I'm going to be printing on is A4 in size. Now obviously I'm trying to recreate a miniature painting, so I'll only be using a tiny bit of that A4 paper. So I've decided to photograph some of my mum's Wind in the Willows characters that she made using the Cynthia Treen patterns so that she can have some pictures to go onto her doll's house as well. So. Here is an example of me taking a photograph using the 2.8 aperture and you can see that the turd's hand is out of focus there and the background too is very much out of focus. With the f22 aperture you can see that all of the characters are in focus and you can also see some of the detail in the fabric in the background. So again I'll show you here for her turd character on the f22 aperture more should be in focus. So when I take this picture, if you look at the front of the car in particular, it's in focus as well as the turd character. Whereas when I set the aperture to f2.8 and then take the picture, you will now be able to see that the front of the car is out of focus and I've really focused in on the turd's eyes. So whilst using this little backdrop for the characters, I thought I'd also photograph Spooky in this position for my doll's house picture. Um, I wasn't actually happy with this picture, I thought it came out quite dark and I also had a problem because somebody came to try and help and this meant that the photo shoot took a little turn in a different direction. My next video that I will set to run straight on after this video is going to show you the printing of my chosen picture using the Canon Pixmar printer onto the canvas paper. Um, so please do tune into my next video. A little spoiler alert, I'm really pleased with how it turned out, but it wasn't smooth running. It wasn't just a case of downloading the picture and printing it. So please do tune into the next video to see how it turned out. Hopefully the information about the camera has been helpful for anyone who is looking for a camera review. Please do leave any questions in the comments if you have any.